Today I'm doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Welcome to Candlewick Library, I'm Cheryl. I wasn't tagged to do this, it's just a tag I wanted to do, so I'm not gonna tag anyone either. And this is just supposed to be kind of looking over the reading you've done so far this year. So number one is the best book you've read so far this year. So far, Hope Between the Pages by Pepper Basham is still my favorite book I've read this year. There's been quite a few that have come really close, and some that I've even rated higher, just because I think sometimes I rate nonfiction higher than fiction, but I really enjoyed this book and it has still stuck with me for a couple of months now. While some have come close, this is still my favorite at this point. Number two is the best sequel you've read so far this year, and that would be Set in Stone by Kimberly Woodhouse. This is the paleontology book I've talked about a couple of times now, since this is book two in the series that it's part of, even though it didn't have anything really to do with book one except for the dinosaurs. Loved this book so much it has to count as the favorite sequel so far this year. Number three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. For that, it's Uprising by Jennifer Nielsen. I talked in my tag video that she is one of my auto buy authors, so when a book comes out, I buy it, and I don't always get to it right away. And this is her newest book. This is another World War II historical fiction from her, and it sounds like it has to do with the Polish ghettos. And it says, waiting to re-rescue was never an option. The fighting in the ghetto continued in an endless string of explosions, gunshots, and tank fire. German planes flew over the ghetto along with the occasional Russian plane, reminding us that one day soon the war would return to all of Warsaw. Sounds good, I'm sure it will be good, and I definitely wanna to get to that soon. Number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and I'll just have to put a picture up of this. This is the Roseanne White book, Christmas at Sugar Plum Manor. That is supposed to be a Nutcracker retelling, and I am definitely looking forward to that book. Number five is Biggest Disappointment So Far, and I think that that has to go to Dear Henry, Love Edith. I talked about this in my May wrap-up. I just was so surprised that this that I didn't love this book more than I did. Uh, with the premise and thinking it was gonna be epistolary, thinking it was gonna be like You've Got Mel, I just really expected to love this book and it fell so flat for me. Number six is Biggest Surprise, and for that I'm going with one of the very first books I read this year, The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orksy. And this was only a surprise because I just, even though I had seen the movie, I had no idea how much I was gonna love this book. I really enjoyed it. And it was really fun to get together with my mom and my oldest daughter and to be able to discuss, discuss it since all three of us read it together. Number seven is favorite new author, and that could be a debut author or new to you author. And for this, I wrote down two names. First, I thought of John Krakauer, because there's a lot of authors that are my favorite authors right now that it's kind of a new thing, but I'd read their books before and it wasn't until their more recent books that they started becoming favorites. But John Krakauer I read for the first time this year and I really loved his Under the Banner of Heaven so much that I did buy another book by him. So I thought of him, but I don't know yet since I haven't read more than one. James Ponty came to mind. He's the one that wrote City Spies and I've really enjoyed all of the books that I've been reading from him and so I think he has to be on that list. And then Angela Bell, if she keeps writing the way she wrote in this book, then she'll definitely be a favorite author too. Number eight and number nine were a little trickier. Number eight is newest fictional crush and number nine is newest favorite character. And I didn't really have a fictional crush or necessarily a favorite character, that somebody that really stood out as a favorite character this year so far. But I did want to mention from this book, I really loved the characters in this book. I really liked Clara, and so she could be a new favorite character. And I really liked her mom. Her mom is very eccentric and loves animals and is always picking up random animals along the way and adding them to their journey. And I thought that was really funny. There were things about her that would have driven me crazy, but I, she was very endearing. And then for the crush, I guess Theodore in this book, I really loved him and I liked the way he talked, I loved his attitude. So I would say that for both of those questions, the closest I've come is probably the characters in this book. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. And I don't think I've had weeping tears yet in a book this year, but Boy on the Wooden Box definitely made me tear up when I was reading this to my daughters and when I read it myself. For number 11, a book that made you happy, I'm gonna say the book that my daughter wrote because I really enjoy reading her books and seeing her talent and seeing her grow in her writing. Number 12, the most beautiful book you received or bought for this year. And I'm gonna have to point, pull this one up again because I really love the cover. My ideal covers are like this, where it kind of looks more like what British covers are. I, I, I'm okay with people on the cover as long as it looks good. Some look more cheesy than others. Some are really beautiful with a person on the cover, but I do tend to like this style of cover more. 
And number 13 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? That can go back to my goals video at the beginning of the year. Everything I talked about in that, I still need to read from June forward. The Sherlock books, that's reading Harry Potter, which I still haven't got to. So there's quite a few books that I knew at the beginning of the year I wanted to read and I haven't yet. That would take a long time to go through all of those again. So I thought I would mention two. One, I mentioned in a tag recently, when the day comes, I still need to read this. This definitely is getting read this year, hopefully this summer. And another book that I added very recently was We Were the Lucky Ones. By Georgia Hunter because my husband and I watched this series on I think it was Disney Plus this says Hulu oh yeah so it was on Disney Plus but made by Hulu while I have to give content warnings for subject matter language pretty much all the things you can go on IMDb and look it was very compelling and man it was it was one of those shows where my husband and I were just on the edge of our seat the whole show and really loved the characters. And then I found out it was a true story and I didn't know that. And so then I found out this book is written by somebody in the family. So it was bought right after watching the show. So I'm definitely want, wanting to get to this this year to see, to get more of the story. As far as how my reading has gone so far, I think it's going really well. I've read a lot of really good books. The last couple of months haven't been as many books as I was hoping to get to but I've still read quite a bit and I've really enjoyed most of the books I've read. So I am thoroughly enjoying all my reading this year and looking forward to the rest of it.